Hi guys, I'm Shane. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make custom video maps to add animated shadows to your renders. So let's get into it. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me posting about a light stencils pack that I've made using these techniques that I'm going to show in this tutorial. This pack includes nine different video maps of a range of trees in both calm and heavy wind. It also comes with three types of snowfall and six window frames, all at 2K resolution, so it gives you a wide variety of looks that you can go for. It also comes with some ambient noise of birds chirping and the After Effects file, so you can make any necessary changes and export the different combinations for yourself. I've chosen to do trees for this first pack, as it's very popular to use these types of shadows in renders and photography, as it's a great way to add context and depth without the need for extra geometry. And it's also a great way to add in that natural element. Check out the description for the Gumroad link to get your hands on the pack today. And make sure that you tag me in your work on Instagram so that I can see how you put them to use in your renders. This video is going to be split into two parts. Firstly, we'll go over how you can make your own video maps from scratch. And in the second part, I'll show you how to add them to your Keyshot renders using spotlights. So first off, I'm going to show you how to make them yourself. So when I went out and shot these video maps, I did them on my iPhone. So it just shows that you don't need a massively fancy camera to do this yourself. If there's a particular look you want to go for, making your own maps can always be fun. There aren't any rules to this, but some things that I found make the process easier is to make sure that the object you're videoing is on a fairly plain backdrop. So when I was shooting these trees, I was trying to get an angle where the sky was in the background and there was a lot of contrast so that I knew it would be easier to edit out in post. So get out there, get your hands dirty and have some fun with it. So once you've gone and shot all your footage, you're going to open up After Effects. If you go into a new project, into new composition, the only downside to shooting on the iPhone is that the resolution isn't great. So I'm only going to limit it at a 2K texture which is plenty and also saves us a bit of memory for the purpose that we're going to use these maps for because by the time you put them into your rendering software and add a bit of blur to the edges, you wouldn't even notice the difference. I've also got my duration set to 10 seconds here because a lot of the time I'm not going to be using these video maps for any longer than sort of three second snippets. So I'm not going to render out more frames than needed. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go up to layer, new, and add a new solid. I'm just going to add a white solid here and that's going to work as our background. If you then open your file explorer and drag in the video clip. And as you can see, this is just the, the video that I've shot using my iPhone. If I bring that quality down a bit, it'll load a bit faster. So you'll just want to scrub through this and find a part that you like. You'll probably need to reduce the quality here so that it uh, loads a bit faster. And if your computer's faster than mine, then that may not be necessary. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, we've got our tree here and I've shot it in a way that there's a lot of contrast between the actual leaves and the sky. So waiting for the right circumstances to shoot in as well was important. So, you know, this, the sun wasn't directly behind, which would just make editing this a lot harder. So the first step is to go into your effects and presets and add in a channel mixer. You drag that onto the footage there. And I'm just going to open these three drop downs because these are the three we're going to use. If you make your footage monochrome first, because as these are just going to be used as a stencil, it, we only need a grayscale texture. First things first, I'm going to increase the red blue, which will get rid of most of the sky. But as you can see, that washes out the leaves here, which we want these to pretty much be black. So if we take down the red green, and as you can see, that brings back some more of the sky. So we're just gonna take the red red, increase that, get rid of more of the sky, maybe reduce that down. And you know, just tweaking with the values, it won't be exactly the same as mine here because it all depends on the weather when you were shooting. So I'm happy with that because we've got rid of all the sky. But as you can see, these leaves need to be quite a bit darker. So I'm going to add another effect. I'm going to add levels and just drag that onto my footage there. And I'm just going to grab this slider here and bring it into the center until my leaves are black. 
And if we go back to the start and press play, as you can see, we've got our video map. And that is pretty much all you need to do there. You may want to go in and add a bit of blur to the edges. If I go into full, you can see uh, it's not, you know, it's a bit pixelated. So adding a bit of blur would, would help that. But as I said, you're probably going to do that in your uh, in your software. You can definitely do it in Keyshot. I'm not sure about any other softwares. So one other thing that you might want to do is you might want to add a mask. So if I use this example here of the willow tree, we hide this layer, add in our footage here. And what we can do is if we go to our effects and controls for the previous one that we've just done, we can copy and paste these effects across and that should work quite nicely. So select them both, control C, and there you go, that's turned it into our black and white texture. But we've got this tree here, which I don't want in this particular example. So what you can do is select the footage, click your pen. And if you've never used After Effects, you may not have done this before, but if you just click around the part that you want, that will mask it out and get rid of that tree. And if you wanted it the other way around, if you click your drop down, go into masks and click inverted, then it will save the other side. One other thing that you might want to do is add a stencil to this. So maybe you want to add a window frame that these trees are coming through. So you can make those in, in Photoshop or you can even just make them in After Effects. But here's one I made earlier. This is my favorite window shape from the stencil pack. So I'll use this as an example. So all you want to do is make sure it's on top of your footage and right click it, change your blending mode to multiply and that's it there. So multiply only takes through the dark values. So it will make the white values transparent and we'll get our trees coming through. And that's it. As I said, you can go in and add some Gaussian blur or something like that to uh, soften the edges of the trees. Um, so all you want to do now is export. I use the media encoder. So if you just go into file, export, add to media encoder, and then I'll just show you the next step once that loads. And once that opens up, you're just going to click your drop down here. You can change it to PNG or you can change it to JPEG if you want to save some memory, which is what I've done, which is useful because it means you won't need to break down the video when you import it into Keyshot. If you've downloaded my light stencils pack, it does come with an After Effects with all the videos in one place. So you can go through and select the one you like. You can add the snow in or you can add in all the window frames and do it all within After Effects if that's how you prefer to do it. But I am going to show you how to do it all in Keyshot if you haven't got access to After Effects or if you just don't want to re-export all these different ones, then you can add them together quite easily in Keyshot. So if you jump into Keyshot, I'll show you how you can actually use these in your renders and how you can combine the different maps for different effects. I've just got a simple scene here to demonstrate. It's just a plane on the floor. So add in your spotlight, go to edit, add geometry and add a plane. This is just usually what I do. I'm using Keyshot 9 here. In Keyshot 10, you can just add a spotlight. If you double click it and change the material to a spotlight and you should see a light starting to be cast. I usually work in lumens, so I'll adjust that and bump that brightness up. Open up our material graph and we're going to go to textures, video map. And this is where we're going to add our JPEG sequence that we rendered earlier. So click your folder and import all your frames. I've gone for the eucalyptus tree with a heavy wind. So all you're going to do here is just connect it to the color of the spotlight. And you can see that's way too big. So I'm just going to adjust the size there, 0.05. And I'm going to bring my angle to zero. As you can see there, we've got our video map. So if we jump into animation, it usually on import only puts it in at one second. So if you scroll down to time settings and just change that to 10 seconds, because I know that ours is 10 seconds long, it's quite hard to see what's going on. So if you click this button here, and that would generate a quick preview. So it won't make you wait, so I'm just going to skip this part forward. So if you click play, you can see your video map in action. You can also scrub through your animation and find a still frame that you like and render out stills. It doesn't have to be an animation. So what else is there to know? 
well you may notice that your texture has a box around it so you can actually change this if you double click your map go into the color settings and just change your color here so if i change that to white you can see that box disappears obviously you've got this harsh line here but if that's off frame it could look quite nice um, because you just have the, the leaves there with no boundary there and then one other thing that you'd probably want to do is actually blend it with a color so if you select that go to your kelvin and pick like a warmer color um, on the kelvin scale that that will help your renders to look a little bit more realistic what i'm actually going to disable that for now because i do find that it messes things up whenever you're uh, combining your maps so you can just do it with a color adjust at the end which i'll show you now say we want to put this in one of the frames how would we do that so if you click the connection go to utilities and color composite and then you're going to need to insert one of the frames that you like so my favorite one from the pack is window 4 which is like the arch shape so drag that in and connect it to the background and you're going to want to change the blend mode to multiply and remember to adjust your scale to match you'll also want to take off repeat vertical and horizontal and you want the mapping type to be the same so it's planar and you see it's misaligned here i think that's from our video map here we just need to reset that yep and that will reset it to its default coordinates i guess so again if we generate a preview then we can see what that looks like so to add in the snow we're just going to create another color composite here going to go back into our textures and into our video map and select the texture that we want I'm going to go for the medium snow for this example and then just connect that to the background and change your blend mode remember to adjust your scale to match and the angle and then also to adjust your duration so it matches too so you may scrub through this and see that it's, it's quite subtle and you may want that to be more noticeable. So if you click that connection and add in our favorite color to number and then increase the input from, let's put it to 0.5 just so you can really see it. Let's go even higher just so it's obvious. And this will allow you to get a good idea of if you've aligned your textures properly and the snow is going the right way. So um, if it's not, you may want to go into here and flip it horizontal. So maybe we want it to go the other way because um, this works well with some of the tree maps that are included in the pack, which are quite clearly blowing in one direction. And especially if you're using the heavy snow, it's it's got quite a strong direction to it. So you may want to flip that depending on uh, on the direction that the wind is blowing in the video map that you select. So. To see these all working together, we're just going to click on our preview again. Stop it there. And very nice. So the final touches on this, just to make it look a little bit nicer, what I would tend to do, uh, I would reduce that down because that snow is too heavy. Uh, but I would also go into our spotlight. And if you zoom in here, you can see it is a very hard shadow, so I, I, I kind of want to soften that bit. And you would do that by adjusting your radius here. Do something like 0.05. You can see that softens our shadows up loads and goes for a more subtle effect. Whereas if we brought that down to 0.01, you're, you're starting to get a little bit harder shadows. I just want to take the edge off, so I'm just going to go to 0.05. And that just softens the edges quite nicely, I think. And then sort of the last thing you might want to do is add a bit of color to your light so how i would do that because you've got all these things combined here rather than go through and adjust each one i would click this connection go to utilities and a color adjust and then i just go into colorize and just select something on my kelvin drop down so if i wanted to go for a warmer light or a cooler light so usually i'd go for warmer because most of these tree maps are simulating shadows and the sun so i would go for a warmer light in that situation So I'm also going to show you how you can use these in Blender. So if you open up Blender and delete everything out, and if you just hold Shift A to add in a plane, if you go into edit mode and scale using S and scale it up by something like 10, just so we can get a good view of what's going on. We're then going to Shift A to add in our light. 
So we want to go to light and spotlight. And we're going to move it with G and Z to move up in the Z direction. So we can't see anything here. So let's just extend our window out like that and change this to a render view. And still not seeing a lot because we need to increase the power of our light. So make it 500 or something like that so we can see clearly what's going on. So we need to add in our stencil to start blocking out this light. So if we go shift A and image and you want to add it as images as planes. If you can't see this, it's an add-on within Blender. So go to edit preferences into your add-ons and then type in image and you'll see it there images as planes so shift a image images planes and then you're just going to select one of the images in the sequence as you can see here i've just selected one and you can see that the texture is applied there but it's not creating our stencil yet so what we want to do firstly is change our render engine over to cycles and again not got that effect that we want yet so what we want to do is extend this window at the bottom and go into our shader editor and then we want to connect the color of this texture to the alpha and those black and white values will control what's being used as the stencil and to see that easier if we go into our light settings and reduce the radius so we've got hard shadows you can see this is uh, inverted to what we want so we want to flip those colors so if you press shift a go to your search and type in invert then add that to that connection there and that will flip it so that our stencil is applied correctly so then just to turn this into an animation you would just go into your folder here select all of your frames so i go all the way up to 300 and then change this here to image sequence change your frames to 300 and if you scrub through your timeline so change that to our timeline you should see that the animation is playing one last thing that you might want to do is parent these two together so they can move together so if you click your plane first and then hold shift and click your light and press ctrl p and click object then that will parent the plane to the light so if you are to reposition your spotlight then your plane will move with it and that's how you make video maps from scratch to use in Keyshot, Blender or any 3D software. Make sure you check out the link in the description to download my light pack. And if you do put them to use in any of your work, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Shane Spence Design. Leave a comment down below for what you'd like to see next and subscribe for more tutorials.